OK, we're now going to start using these ideas of how to differentiate functions to do some other kinds of things with coordinate geometry. So we're going to be thinking about finding the equations of tangents. Now, remember, tangents are lines that meet a curve in one place, that meet a curve in one place. In other words, they like just skim the curve. You can kind of see it in that example down there. That tangent is just hitting that curve at that one point. OK. So we're going to try and find the equation of the tangent to a very simple curve, y equals x squared, when x is equal to 3. Now, we're going to be using our classic equation of a straight line, y minus y1 equals m brackets, minus, uh, m brackets x minus x1, because it's going to be a straight line. The tangent is obviously a straight line there. So remember, we need those two things. We need a coordinate and we need the gradient. Well, I'm going to start off by finding the gradient. So the gradient function, if y equals x squared, then the gradient function dy by dx is just going to be 2x. So I'm going to find the gradient when x equals 3. When x is equal to 3, dy by dx is going to be equal to 6. I've just substituted in 3 there. So I've done this bit. I've now found out the gradient. I'm going to try and find out a point. So I'm going to find the y value when x equals 3. Well, when x equals 3, y equals 3 squared, which is 9. So the coordinate we've got is that x is 3 and that y is 9. So now we can just put all of that information together. We can find out the equation of the tangent. It will be y minus y1 equals m, which is 6, brackets x minus x1. And that's the equation of the tangent. I'm going to just manipulate it to get it into its kind of standard form here. So I have 6x minus 18. So y is going to be equal to 6x minus 9. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you this all on Desmos to show what's actually happened here. So we've got 6x minus 9. OK, you can, you can use this app. It's a, a free app to download. So one of my equations is y equals x squared. And the other bit that we just said was when x is equal to 3. So I think the coordinate then we said was 3, 9. So you can see that coordinate there. And then the line that we think is the tangent is that y equals 6x minus 9. And look what's happened. I'm going to just quickly stretch this in a way that makes it a little bit easier to see. We have just found the equation of the line that just touches that red curve in one place and when you zoom in it's kind of hard to see it but it's only touching it in that one place that we've got there so that's actually what we've done in that question we have found out the equation of that green line so it just skims that red one that we've got there if i made it any different let's say i made it minus uh eight instead you can see how it's actually not just skimming it anymore. It's touching it in two different places. And think to yourself, what would happen if I changed it from minus 8 to minus 10? How many places would it cross? Well, let's have a look. When it's minus 10, it doesn't cross it at all. So it's that exact number of it being a minus 9 that it just touches it in that one place. So that's actually what we were doing here. Let's see if now we can apply this for some other questions. Well, not some other questions, sorry. I'm going to talk about normals instead. So a normal, normal, this word means perpendicular. So this time, we're not going to be finding the equation of a tangent. We're going to be finding out the equation of a normal to the curve y equals x squared when x equals 3. This is the important bit. The normal to a curve is the line perpendicular to the tangent. So this was the tangent we worked out in the previous question. We're now going to be doing one that is perpendicular to it. In other words, it meets it at a right angle. So it's just going to cut straight through it. So the equation that we had from earlier was y minus 9 equals 6 brackets x minus 3. And we're now going to find out the equation of the normal. Remember, you need two things. One of them is you need the coordinate, which is 3, 9. Um, so we can say that coordinate is 3, 9. Now the gradient earlier on that we had for the tangent was 6. So the gradient of the tangent, which I can say m with a little t, is 6. So the gradient of the normal is going to be the negative reciprocal. It's going to be minus a 6. You could have done the gradient of the perpendicular, which sometimes I write like that as well. Either one of these two ways that we've got here would be good. 
So I'm now going to put all of that information together. It's just going to be y minus y1 equals m, which is now the normal gradient, x minus x1. So let's just manipulate this a little bit so I can put it onto Desmos. So it's minus a sixth x. A sixth times three, and they're going to be positive, is going to be a half. So y equals minus a sixth x plus 19 over 2. Half plus 9 is 19 over 2. Let's see if that works when I put it in. So it's minus a sixth x plus 19 over 2. Minus a sixth x plus 19 over 2. Now, I have to make sure this doesn't quite look like it's um, perpendicular anymore because of Unless I've done something wrong, it could be because I've just switched these axes up. Hang on one second. Yeah, that's better. If I now put in the other one that we just had, which was y equals 6x minus 9, when the axes are all the same as each other, in fact, let's see if I can... I'll leave that there for now. I just want them to be roughly the same, which they roughly are. You can see that the green line and the purple line are now perpendicular to each other. Okay, It's because I've been changing the axes, which is why it didn't look quite as smooth as it should have done. So that was the one we have just found. That was the one we found in the first part of the question. And I've said here a very common error in this in these kind of questions is for students to accidentally forget whether the question is asking for the tangent or for the normal so if it's the normal there's that extra step of having to take the negative reciprocal that we've got here so this is the negative reciprocal of the gradient okay so we've got how many examples one two examples to try this one says to find the equation of the normal to this curve when x equals 9. So let's have a go. We have y equals x plus 3 root x. Remember we need two things. We're going to need a coordinate and we're going to need some gradient and it's the gradient of the normal. So I think I'm probably going to write this in its index form. So that's 3x to the half. I'm going to differentiate this because I want to find out what the gradient is going to be. So x will differentiate to 1. I'm going to multiply 3 by that half to get 3 halves. And I'm going to reduce that a half by 1 to minus a half. And it tells me that x is equal to 9. So when x is equal to 9, dy by dx is going to be equal to 1 plus 3 over 2 multiplied by 9 to the minus a half. Now, personally, I just hate typing stuff like this into the calculator. So I actually just like to work this out slowly. So it's going to be 3 over 2. Well, 9 to the power of a minus is going to be 1 over 9. And then to the power of a half means the square root. And the square root of a ninth is a third. These threes cancel. So I get 1 plus a half, and 1 plus a half is 3 over 2. Obviously, you could just put this in the calculator, but I don't want to put it in the calculator. So the gradient of the normal, then, the m of the normal is going to be the negative reciprocal of this. So here we take the negative reciprocal for the normal. So we've got this bit. Now I'm going to find out the coordinate. So if x equals 9, I can find out what y is by using the original equation. It's going to be 9 plus 3 times the square root of 9. That's 9 plus 3 times 3, which is going to be 18. So my coordinate is going to be 9, 18. And my gradient is minus 2 thirds. So I get y minus y1 equals m brackets x minus x1. Again, you could stop there if you wanted to. I probably will do a bit of manipulation because I want to type this into Desmos. I'm going to get minus 2 thirds x. It's going to be a plus here because it's a negative times a negative, and it's 18 over 3, which is 6. So we get minus 2 thirds x, and 16 plus 18, sorry, 6 plus 18 is 24. Now I'm going to just reset that Desmos so that I can get the axes just how I want them. So my first equation was y equals x plus 3 root x. 
and we're trying to do the normal and I think for the normal that I've got here so it's minus two thirds x plus 24 y equals minus two thirds x plus 24 and now you can see what I'm saying it does make that perfect right angle that we've got there and the coordinate of that place where there's the right angle the x coordinate is 9 and the y coordinate is 18 which is just what the question asked so it's pretty nice to see I would download this Desmos app and you can type your answers in you can see this bit that we've got up here is just a perfect right angle where it's meeting because it's a normal it's perpendicular to the tangent Okay, let's do one more of these. This time it's not going to be a normal, it is going to be a tangent. It's going to be a tangent to this curve when x equals 3. Remember we need two things. We need the coordinate and you need the gradient. This time we want the gradient of the tangent. So dy by dx, when I differentiate y, I'm going to get 3x squared minus 6x plus 2, and that minus 1 is going to disappear. And x is equal to 3. So the gradient of the tangent is going to be 3 times 3 squared minus 6 times 3 plus 2. So that's 3 times 9, which is 27, minus 18 plus 2. 27 minus 18 is 9, and 9 plus 2 is 11. So I've got this thing. It's done. Now I'm going to find out what the y coordinate is. If x is equal to 3 y is going to be equal to 3 cubed minus 3 times 3 squared plus 2 times 3 minus 1. Now you could use a calculator, but look, you can spot that this thing and this thing are the same as each other. So 3 cubed minus 3 cubed is just going to cancel. So it's going to be a lot quicker to do this without. 2 times 3 is 6, and 6 minus 1 is 5. So the coordinate that we've got here is x is 3 and y is 5. Just as simple now as putting them into that formula, y minus y1 equals m brackets x minus x1. You could stop there. I just like to put it in a more standard kind of form. So you get y equals 11x minus 28. Let's check this all out by putting it into Desmos, and then you're going to try 12f. So that's x cubed minus 3x squared plus 2x minus 1. Okay, y equals, and you can do this yourself, x cubed, I hope I've got this right, minus 3x squared plus 2x minus 1. Zoom out, it's a cubic, unsurprisingly. And then our other one is 11x minus 28 y equals 11x minus 28. Okay, we're hoping for a tangent where x is equal to 3. So let's see. Oh, I didn't want to manipulate those, but that's okay. x equals 3. Looks like we've got this right. When x equals 3, y was equal to... Maybe I've typed this in. Oh, y was equal to 5. There we go. For some reason, it's not recognising the bit that they are actually tangent, but if I try and squeeze this axis, there we go. You can see a lot better. It is meeting at that coordinate 3, 5, and it is a tangent just there. You can see it's just meeting at that one place. So we've definitely got that one right. So I'd highly, highly recommend um, using Desmos to be able to check and see if you've got your answers right. It's also just really nice to see the whole pattern of how this is working. So you can try exercise 12F.